There's a lot of guys in L.A. who wear black suits. Ushers, waiters, floor walkers, and the crew down at the coroner's office. Pettuccini wore a black suit, but he didn't do any of those things. He had a different angle. I found that out the first time I saw him. A big guy with a lot of black hair and a pair of hands he could have rented out to a shovel company. It all started last Thursday in a one-arm joint on 6th Street. I was working on a cup of coffee that would have been Exhibit A for the restaurant commission. When the skinny guy runs the place, got ambitious. Hey, bud. Something to go with your coffee or bear claw, maybe, huh? I'll chew on the coffee a while. I made it myself. I got a special recipe. It's a secret. Save it for the next war. We'll need some weapons. Oh. Try to please the public and what do you get? Nothing but talk. Everybody got to have an answer. I'm going to be a big man in this business someday. and I'm Sure, sure. Me, your phone's to... ringing. Maybe it's J.P. Morgan. Well, you're a wise guy or something, huh? Well, so it's only a girl. I ain't got one. A girl ties you down, you can't get nowhere. It's a bad business. Hello, you bear claw coffee shop. You who? I'll ask him. Hey, bud, is your name Regan? Who wants to know? A guy named Lion. Hang up on him. Bad business hanging up on people. Here. Okay. Yeah? Oh, Jeffrey, I'm glad I finally located you. I know this your day off. I'm busy. So long. Now, wait, wait, wait. Don't hang up. I wouldn't think of interfering with anything you have planned today. I I just thought I might be able to help you relax, relieve the tension. What's in it for you? Oh, now, now, Jeffrey. uh, (coughs) I, uh... I intend to watch the workouts at the Lacey Street Gym today, but uh, I I can't make it myself. Now, if you'd care to go, just use my name at the main gate. Uh, They'll let you right in. Who's the client? 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 I didn't say anything about a client. Of course, if you want someone to talk to, someone who knows the ins and outs of the fine, manly sport of boxing, uh, there's a chap named Pettacini. Be sure and look him up. Give him my best regards. Old friend, room together in college. What college? Uh, 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 What college? Uh, well, at the moment, it escapes me. So did I. So long. And now, wait, wait. Oh, the truth is, Jeffrey, I don't really know this Pettigini guy at all. He retained us. But I thought you could enjoy yourself at the gym. Meet Pettigini. Talk to him. Find out what he wants. Then the first thing tomorrow, you can start right in, show him the kind of service international... Can... That's bad business you're hanging up on people. Oh, shut up. Every time I get hot into the collar, I always sit down and drink myself a cup of coffee. You want some? I'm not that hot. Oh, is that going to be for you, that him calling back? Huh? Try hello. You'll pick it up from there. Hey, where you going? <laughs> What'll I say to him? Try hello. You'll pick it up from there. That's what you just said. Yeah. I had my choice of talking to the lion again or going straight out to the Lacey Street gym and talking to a guy named Pettuccini. I already knew what the lion had to say. Hmm? So I drove out Sunset past uh, Alvarado, found it in the middle of the block. A big pile of cement that might have been a soundstage once. I drifted through the gate and started up the ramp. That's when a little guy wearing a hat he could have used for a snood stuck out a hand. Price is 50 cents. 50 cents to watch. I worked for Anthony J. Lyon. He said to use his name. All right, you used it. Four bits. You always this nice? I won first prize this week. You must have cheated. Look, the name's Joey Archer. Used to fight Bantamweight. Now, you're tempting me to be an assault with a deadly weapon if I hit you. I'll wire for help. Oh, cut it out. All the time, answers, answers. Look, I came here to see a guy named Pettuccini. And Joey's making it tough for you, is that it? Huh? My name's Pettuccini. You looking for me? Oh, yeah. Yeah, Lion sent me. (laughs) You be Regan? Joey apologized, don't you, Joey? Yeah, but this guy... Oh. Okay, Regan. I think I'm still fighting sometimes. (laughs) <laughs> Thanks for coming. Look, I've been working out with the boys. I want to get out of these clothes and catch a shower. My office is upstairs. I'll be right up. Make yourself at home. It wasn't much of an office. A couple of rooms with a connecting wastebasket. Figured Pettuccini wasn't going to retire from what he made out of the boxing business. I was just finishing my cigarette when he walked in. This time, he wasn't wearing the sweatsuit. He was wearing a black one. But he skipped the white carnation. I didn't figure to do much for that white collar he was wearing backwards. Father Pettuccini? Yes, that's right. I didn't know you were a priest down there. Well, you can't punch a bag wearing a cassock. And you're surprised, aren't you? <laughs> I'm 38 years old, Regan, and I get surprised every day. There's no other Pettuccini around here. No, I'm the one you're supposed to see. Well, maybe the lion didn't know you were a priest either. Well, come to think of it, I may not have mentioned it when I phoned him. Yeah, I thought so. Well, Father, we'd be glad to help, but I'm not sure you have anything to be in our line. This is in your line. Oh? All right, Father, what can I do for you? Find Davy Lang. Do you know him? Middleweight? Mm -hmm. One who topped uh, Al Shummer two nights ago. Answer him. 
It's a guy like Dave, he'd be hard to lose. Not so very. You know anything about him? Well, I've seen him fight. He's a comer. Turned pro a couple of years ago, that's all. I'll tell you the rest. He's got a good right hand, and he keeps him trading. He's one of my boys, Regan, and I want him back. Well, a guy like Dave, he can take care of himself. Nobody can take care of himself. Davy's on parole, Regan. He made a mistake once. And you don't want him to make another one? He's due to report at the, repo- uh, at the parole office before Saturday. Well, what's he waiting for, an engraved invitation? I don't know, Regan. I haven't talked to him lately. Oh, he's disappeared. Yeah. They gave him a rule book when they let him loose. He knows what he's doing. And you and I both know what it means if he antagonizes those people. It'd be rotten if they sent him back up. Rotten. You can only do one job, Father. I'll do a dozen if I have to. That's why I wear this collar. Have you got a light? Yeah. Thanks. You know, I was raised on this street, Regan. I've known a lot of guys like Davy Lang, kids who make little mistakes that turned into big mistakes. You figure Davy Lang hasn't made that big one yet? I figure David Lang isn't going to make that big one. That's why I sent for you, Regan. Here, here's a check. If it takes more, I'll get it. No, thanks. You won't help me? Well, I didn't say that. What did he turn up missing, Father? Right after his bout last Tuesday night. I'm his manager and trainer till he gets going. He dropped Al Schumer in the fourth. Ten minutes later, I went to his dressing room and he was gone. I haven't seen him since. Anybody else see him? Doorman? Cab driver? No. I thought he'd call me, but he hasn't. I've been over to his place three times. No answer. Well, what do his people say? Uh, his parents dead. He lives alone at this address. Yeah. You've seen him in the ring. You know what he looks like. Yeah. Does he have a girl? I don't know. Anything else that would help? Yes. Davy's a good boy. I told you I'll do the job, Father. You'll do it better if you believe in him. Suppose it turned out different. Suppose I tell you about a middleweight named Ignatius Loyola. Look, nobody's going to put Davy's picture on a church window. You don't have to be a saint to make the finals. Even the Bible says sin's here to stay. And that's why people like me will always have a job to do. All right, Father. I'll let you know when I have something. Thanks, Regan. Oh, Regan. Yeah? You didn't ask me why I didn't call in the police. I didn't have to. Davy's not in violation until Saturday. Crosby did it. I don't know why I couldn't. This is the old... I left him standing there blowing smoke rings. A kind of smile came on his face, like... Like maybe he just got some inside dope and something real big. But I didn't feel like smiling. I climbed in my car and drove down to Missing Persons Bureau. They hadn't picked up anybody who looked like Davy Lang. Then I went through the dead and unclean records over the city morgue. Nothing there. Lincoln Heights and City Jail, all the hospitals, turned up the same. Nothing. It was after seven when I got to the address Father Pettuccini had given me. A red brick apartment house in South Marathon. Davy's place was on the second floor. I pulled out a ring of skeletons and won my letter on the third key. I didn't expect to find anything. I was wrong. A blue suit with a scar across his face was standing in the middle of the room. It was dark in there, but I could still see that forty-five. Then I began to feel nervous, like a hula dancer in a forest fire. All right, Nosey, close the door. Walk over to that wall. That's right. Okay. Now, tell me you're the landlord. Hmm? Milkman? Friend of Davies? That way, huh? Well, you... Listen, (laughs) boss. Don't you guys ever learn? My knees folded like an army cot. I began to see pinwheels all over the place. He knelt down beside me and went through my pockets. I heard him grunt when he found my gun. Then he lit a match to read my billfold. He didn't like what he found there, either. Your name is Regan, and you're gum healing for Davy Lang. Who sent you? Oh. I ask you one question. Who sent you, Regan? <clears throat> Was it Mel Lawrence? Did she hire you? <clears throat> no. She'd have more brains than that. Ah, that priest, wasn't it? Davy ain't got no family. It was the sky pilot who hired you, wasn't it? Pettuccini. Yeah. <laughs> Pettuccini. Why didn't I think of that, huh? That a chance. (coughs) 
was a good show, but I didn't catch the last act. But I did remember the advance publicity. Any kind of preview would tell you Davy Lang hadn't just run out on a priest and parole board. There was a lot more I had to find out, and it figured Father Pettuccini wasn't going to like the way it wound up. It was an ice age later I rolled over and found out I had some legs. Then I found a bottle of scotch on top of the stove, and that helped a lot. I tugged on it while I went around the place. There were three suits and an empty suitcase in the closet and some shirts and things in one of the drawers. Wherever David had gone, he was traveling light. I was trying to fit in the guy with the scar when I remembered him talking about a girl named Mel Lawrence. I polished off the scotch and tried the telephone book. I was lucky. It said Mel Lawrence lived over on Melrose. I was still rocking on my heels when I rang a bell. Bell? When I saw that blonde hair, I began to feel better. She stood there and looked at me a while like I was breathing some air I shouldn't. And she turned halfway around and gave me a profile. I wasn't expecting company or I'd change clothes. You got something better in there? Do you like the way I wear my hair? Fits your face. How about my face? Do you like it? It's nice. I'm looking for a new boyfriend. Mine ran out on me. Come on in. I keep my scotch over there and my bourbon over there. I'm a model. I work three or four days a week, and the rest of the time, I don't have anything to do. Well, if things are that good, why'd your boyfriend leave? You tell me. Maybe I can help. Sure you can. Just put your arms around me and kiss me. My name's not Davy. Shut up and kiss me. Well, that wasn't the trouble. No. Tell me I'm pretty. You're pretty. Tell me you like me a lot. I like you a lot. Tell me you like to kiss me. Tell me that Davy used to tell me. Tell me all that and then tell me why he didn't pick me up. Why'd he clear out? Where's he gone? Sit down. What's the matter with me? What have I got that other girls haven't got? I said sit down. You hit me. It's time to talk sense. Who are you anyway? My name's Regan. I'm looking for Davy Lyon. What What do you want with him? Father Pettuccini hired me to find him. Father Pettuccini? Who wants to make sure Davy keeps his nose clean? You didn't mention your name. I never met him. Davy's told me a lot about him. Only Davy isn't around anymore to tell me about him now. Davy ran out on him. He ran out on me. Maybe he didn't. Oh, yes, he did. When Davy goes someplace, he just goes. That's all. You aren't going to find him. A blue suit with a forty-five and a scar said different. I met him tonight. I met him tonight over at Davy's place. You know Davy's playmates. Who is he? I... I don't know a man with a scar. Who is he? I don't know. I don't know. You aren't helping Davy. I'm not Pettuccini. I couldn't help anyone. Go on, Regan. Get out of here. Get out of here. I don't feel very good. I don't feel very good at all. Well, I knew she had some more to say, but I knew she wasn't going to say it then. So I left her sitting there and got in my car and drove home. I wanted to think. I wanted to get one good reason that said Davy Lang wasn't playing on the wrong team. When the lion's around, you don't do any thinking. The lion was around. Jeffrey, Jeffrey, I'm glad you got home. I wanted to talk to you about Pettuccini. He's a priest, isn't he? Yeah, why? Uh, run any expenses yet? No. Good, then we'll drop it. I'll phone him first thing in the morning, recommend another agency. I've been thinking... You've been thinking wrong. We're staying with this one. Well, now, see here. <laughs> I'm the president of International Detective Bureau, and I can't collect a bonus from a member of the clergy. It wouldn't seem right. You better not try. Oh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Those men take the vow of poverty. But we haven't taken any vow of poverty, and the agency has expenses. Now, get this. We're hired to find Davy Lang, and we're going to find him. Why? Why should we? Because everything doesn't add up to a dollar sign. No? What does? A priest named Pettuccini. A guy named Davy Lang who's got a date with a parole board. Now, wait a minute, Regan. Wait. You've been touched by this thing. Get out of here. There's something in all this is, has got to you. The humanity of the thing. Oh, I can see it now, Regan. Your picture on the front page. Me standing beside you. Brotherhood. Yeah, sure. Yeah, don't shove. The agency held up to public acclaim. Perhaps the paper starts a fund to repay us for our humble efforts. Out. Hey. Hey, Jeffrey. Jeffrey, I haven't finished. You can't shove me out the door that way. Jeffrey, let me in. What's the meaning of this? But I didn't tell him. I was thinking of Davy Lang in a blue suit with a scar, and Father Pettuccini in a blonde who had a lot of tears. It was all out of focus, like a ten cent movie. Blue suit sounded like he knew Davy, but I didn't like the way he'd said it. I was trying to figure why Davy'd run, and that's when I got on the phone and checked a bookmaker I know on Main Street. How you, baby? What's up? Davy Lang, Al Shummerbout, last Tuesday. Lang bounced him in the fourth. Well, how did it figure before the fight? Oh, uh, let's see. Lang was favored. Plenty of eight to five around town. More than usual? Uh, yeah, yeah. Some real coarse coin on that one. 
Anything wrong, baby? Yeah. What? It came out right. Huh? Hey, I, I don't get it. Neither do I. <coughs> no, I won't throw that one away. But an hour later, it started to work through. It figured that Al Shummer, the other fighter, might be able to fill in some ball spots. I got his address from the Times Sports Desk and went down to his hotel. A place on Soda Street. But Al Shummer was through answering questions. He was lying on the floor when I got there. A knife the size of a baseball bat was sticking out the front of him. And he had company. Father Pettuccini. Picking up where that knife left off. You'd better phone the police, Regan. Well, who did it? When did it happen? What? Regan, just call the police, that's all. All right, I'll do it. But, Father... I know enough law for this one, Regan. I'm suspect number one. This is CBS, and you are listening to the story of The Man in Black. Tonight's adventure with Jeff Regan, investigator. Now, here's a special word for those of you who are interested in setting up a retirement fund. One that will permit you to have some of the good things of life before you're too old to enjoy them. I'll give you her name later. Are you satisfied with what you've been able to save so far? It's not easy to save these days, but here's a way you can do it. Start now and save before you spend by putting your savings on an automatic basis. Join the payroll savings plan where you work and invest in United States savings bonds. Under this plan, your firm sets aside whatever sum you name from each paycheck and uses the money to buy savings bonds for you. The bonds keep growing in value, paying you back $4 for every three you save in just 10 years. Buy United States bonds. An investment in bonds is an investment in the future of your country. Buy United States bonds and keep them. And now back to tonight's story of the man in black and Jeff Regan, investigator. Had to do that. When I walked in that hotel room and found Father Pettuccini standing over what was left of Al Shummer, it didn't take 20-20 vision to see Davy Lang was running hard. And Pettuccini was blocking for him. Well, I phoned Homicide, and they showed up ten minutes later. Sanducci was handling it. He changed eight shades when he saw who he had to ask questions. But Sanducci's a cop. It took him 13 years to get that double-breasted suit. And he started in. All right, all right, all of you. Clear out, beat it. We'll dress it up later. Well, Father, you know what I gotta do? We all have our jobs, Lieutenant. I'm gonna ask you first, Regan. Well, I came over to see Al Shummer. And... and he found me beside the body. I was administering extreme unction. He was still alive? I wasn't sure, you know, in a case like yes, that. Yes, I know, Father. What business you got with Al Shummer? He called me, asked me to come. Why? I don't know. I found him this way. Regan, how about you? Well, I wanted to talk to him. About what? Fight. A fight, huh? That's all there is to it. You say un grande bugiardo. I speak Italian, too. Se tu vuoi sapere qual once, allora domande da me. Se tu domande, non sono esabrindiante. Provate me. Padre, io ci ho una missione. E lo devo fare. Regan, io ti domande un'altra volta. Look, once more, Regan. Tell me why you want to see Schummer. Regan works for me. Ask me the question. All right, I, I ask you. Not here. Down at headquarters, Lieutenant. Headquarters? You want me to arrest you? Regan found me in a room with a murdered man. That's enough to take me down for. But I... All right, Father. I take you into custody. And Regan, you know what you have to do. I know, Father. Well, let's get busy. Father? Yes, I've made a thousand arrests in my day. I've taken them in for everything. You sure you want me to do this? Like you said, we all have our jobs to do. When he said that, he was looking right at me. And I began to get a helpless feeling, like a butterfly in a wind tunnel. Well, when we got downtown, Sanducci waved a hand at a prowl car and had the driver turn into the garage instead of going in the front way. Then he climbed out and talked to some uniform standing in the office. They came over and got Father Pettuccini. As soon as they were out of sight, Sanducci turned to me. All my life I've been a cop, Regan. All the time I play it one way. 
I ask and they talk. If they don't, I lock them up till they do. Tonight I played different. You didn't ask any favors. Those guys are taking him up to my office. No newspaper guys or anybody else is going to know he's in there. Then what? I won't ask him anything and neither will anybody else around here. Right now. What about tomorrow? I'm off duty then. Before I leave, I have to ask him something. He won't tell you. This is homicide. Who's he covering for, Regan? He's counting on you to turn up something. You find what he wants, Regan. You find it fast and you find it alone. You've got three hours to do whatever it is. And the morning squad comes in. They like reports, and you can't stop reports. Oh, Regan. Yeah? No follow Manganza. What does that mean? You better not make a mistake. Sanducci was bending over backwards to give me time. Three hours to find Davy Lang. That meant I had to forget the routine stuff and try other ways. I got to Melrose as fast as I could. It took her five minutes to answer the door. She didn't look happy. What are you doing back here? I forgot my homework. Say, you can't... I just did. Why? Now, look, lady, we can pass up the preliminaries, get to the main event. You, you... I want information. I want it fast. Where's Davy? I don't know. I lost my head and told you too much when you were here before. Where's Davy? You're hurting my arm. I'll break it if I have to. If you love him, tell me where he is. I, I don't know. Really, I don't. It's just like I told you. Come on. All right, all right. I was afraid. Talk! Davy told me he meant to throw that fight with Al Shummer Tuesday night. That he'd make a lot of money doing it. That we'd go away and get married, maybe. That's all I know. That isn't enough. The odds were with Davy, he won. Well, then ask Al Shummer what happened. He's all used up. Somebody stuck a knife in him tonight. What? And homicide's holding the priest. Father Pettuccini? You know why? I, I don't. Because he thinks Davy Boy is still number one on the good parade. Now, you and I know different. Now, tell me the real setup. I can't. I don't know. Then I'll tell you. Davy was going to throw that fight. Then he found someone who'd pay him more to play it the other way. So we got together with Shummer. Shummer laid down on the fourth. Davy walked out on you and everybody. Maybe he did. But he didn't kill Shummer. I think he did. Shummer was going to talk. Davy wouldn't kill a man. He's not bad. I heard that before. But he's not. He's not bad. He didn't show up for you, did he? No, but. He double crossed Pet- Pettuccini by fixing a fight. Then he doubled back, didn't throw the fight. He was probably trying to double on Shummer tonight when he stuffed that shiv in his ribs. No, no, that's not Davy. Not Davy at all. No, lady. No, that's not Davy. Of course not. Davy's a real good boy. Well, I thought I had most of it when I left there. He'd figured David got a bright idea somewhere along the line and bet on himself to win. That meant he had to make a deal with Al Shummer, only Shummer wasn't around to talk about it anymore. I figured if I walked into the station and gave that much to Pettuccini, he'd let Homicide handle it from there. But I was wrong. Regan, did you find him? No. Something's happened to him. He's blown town. I can't believe that. Father, he was fixing a fight right under your nose. Davy? He was going to take a dive, but he didn't. And Shummer, was he in on it? Well, they must have tussled over the payoff. What else? Well, he's rattled on everybody he knows, including his girlfriend. We haven't heard Davy's story. He couldn't write one good enough. Isn't it that late? Father, you can call in Sanducci right now. You can tell him what I've told you. They send out a pickup on Davy. You'll have to sooner or later. And what about the parole board? He's broken that. Shummer's dead. We don't know if he did that. Who else? It doesn't fit Davy. All the rest of it does. That can be cleared up. You take a lot of convincing. You're a detective, Regan. You always come up with facts. All I've got is faith. In him? I can't believe he'd kill a man. I'll get Sanducci. All right, Regan. All right. Hey, Sergeant, I... You want... Through, Regan? Yeah. Where's Sanducci? In his office. I'll call him for you. Okay, Marquis. Right in there. Pardon me, please. Who the hell are these people? Sure, I... uh... All right, I stopped the watch. Where is... Come on. Jack, up on mic, boy. Who's the Who's the page 28? Bottom of 27. Bottom of 27. I'm sorry. Who's the... Just get on mic. We're recording, Yeah. Come on, let's go. Bottom of 27. Pardon me, please. Sure, I, uh... Uh, Sarge. Yeah? Never mind calling. Suit yourself, Regan. What did Father Pettuccini send for a mouthpiece? He didn't. Guy just showed up, said he was a lawyer, wanted to see him. Why? I don't know. All right to send him in, wasn't it? I didn't answer that because the guy who'd passed me in the hall had his coat collar turned up. The glasses made it look good. But if he was a lawyer, he'd gone through law school in one day. 
I waited around outside. He wasn't in there long. Ten minutes later, he brushed out the door. I was waiting for him at the corner. Hello, Davy. How's murder these days? <laughs> easy, kid. This is a gun. You're no cop. I don't know what you told him in there, but I don't listen easy. Oh, you must be Regan. You've been looking for me. Yeah. You slip around fast. That gun doesn't make you look that good. I saw the guy with a shiv in him. You might have used the same line on him. Father Petticini told me how you figured it. I can't blame you. I know it must have looked that way. You got something different? I'll tell it to you. I don't expect you to believe it. Did he believe it? About me fixing up the fight? That's right. I was going to lay down for two grand. But you didn't. Who offered you four? I deserve that. But you got it wrong. Tell me how. I was up there in the ring sparring with him. It was one of those crazy things. I wanted to make it look good and... Well, Shummer's got a glass jaw. One connected and he went down for the count. Sounds like a fairy tale. I told you it wouldn't be easy. I had to run after the fight. Denton doesn't like things not to work out. When Shummer went down, the guy who was paying me lost a pile of dough. Wait a minute. The guy who was paying you... Toby Denton. A guy with a scar. Yeah. He's after me. Yeah. Yeah, he sure is. What's the matter? Well, my arithmetic's lousy. When I added this thing up, I put you in, but I left a scar out. What's that mean? It figured you killed Shummer to stop him from talking. I didn't. I can't prove it, but I didn't. Well, whoever did called the Padre to come over there. The guy who killed Shummer wanted the Padre taken in. Why? Why would he want to... Because he knew hooking the Padre was a sure way to smoke you out of hiding. It was all a setup to get you. Toby Denton. Yeah. Toby Denton. You figured it's smart, I... people, but you got there too late. What? It was Denton. He was still wearing the blue suit and the scar. But this time he had help, a muscle in a trench coat. They were both carrying heavy artillery. <laughs> Been waiting ten minutes for you two to finish up. Trench? Yeah? We'll just have to take Regan along with us. All right, straight ahead. Wait a minute, Toby. Regan had nothing to do with this. I'm the guy you want. Don't worry, we'll take good care of him. Me and Regan met once, didn't we, Peeper? How do you feel, Regan? Better than you will when they strap you down in that gas chamber, Tony. <laughs> Toby. You hear that, Trench? Hey, come on, Toby, let's move. Huh? We'll stay right here, Toby. Move? You know I can hardly handle myself. Gun butt wouldn't get me to. You'll have to shoot. There's a cop station half a block away. Leave Reagan, I'll go with you. I always wanted to plug somebody right outside a cop station. It was fast. He went after Toby with all he had. I got busy with the tall guy in the trench coat. He wasn't fast, but he was big and he kept me busy. I landed a lucky kick that turned him green in a second, and after that it was easy. I turned around to give the kid a hand, but I was a second too late. Reagan! Reagan! Davy took them both in his chest. That's when Toby spun around and tried for me, but this time he was too late. Lie still, kid. I'll get a doctor. Uh, Regan. Regan, I, I done everything wrong. I, I didn't want him to get you, too. I didn't... Don't talk. You made up for it all. Uh, I, I'm not bad. All the way? No. Like the Padre always said. You're a good boy. Well, the ambulance got him to emergency hospital and they went to work on him. I waited around with Father Petticini all night until a nurse walked out, said that they were going to have to give Davy some transfusions, but he'd live. Then I got over to headquarters and explained the whole thing to Sanducci. He said it didn't make sense, but when I got Father Petticini on the phone, they talked it over in Italian, and Sanducci seemed satisfied. So it was about ten in the morning when I dropped in on the lion on the way home. He was stretched out on a couch in his office. It was sagging in the middle. So was the lion. Oh, Jeffrey, Jeffrey, don't disturb me. I'm ill, Jeffrey, ill. Now what's the matter with you? Oh, it's that man Pettuccini. He's a fiend, Jeffrey. Man's got an uncanny power. It isn't that... Wait a minute. Where did you see Pettuccini? At the hospital, of course. I checked with headquarters and found out what had happened, so I just thought I'd go over there. You mean you took his money after all? Took his money? Are you being funny? I walked in, the first thing I knew, he'd sven gollied me into the operating room. The operating room? Yeah, I'm a type O, Jeffrey. Me, the same blood type as Davy Lang. And you think you made this thing turn out right. <laughs> well, what are you grinning about? I don't see anything funny. You wouldn't. But cheer up, fatso. Why? Why should I? The hospital pays 25 bucks for a pint of blood. You may get something out of this yet. CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.